New details in our ongoing investigation into mail theft. For months, we've been telling you about an increase in organized crime groups all across our state stealing your mail. Well, last week we told you about an investigation into a series of post office robberies that was happening in the mountains. Before that, Boulder police spoke with us after catching a mail thief suspected of taking thousands of dollars from victims. And before that, we uncovered a Westminster neighborhood that had unknowingly been the victim of thieves for years. And at the center of every one of these cases, U.S. Postal Service keys were used to get into those boxes. Well, now your investigator Karen Morfitt is digging into a case out of El Paso County for us where a prolific mail thief was arrested and is now set for trial in court. And Karen, this is the first time we're actually hearing directly from the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. Yeah, Karen, and for the first time, we are learning more about the work that's being done to protect locks like the ones that are found on these blue postal boxes. In this latest case, a federal complaint says that the suspect was actually able to reverse engineer the keys that are used to break into these boxes and others with kitchen utensils, common kitchen utensils, giving him access to hundreds, if not thousands, of mailboxes from Colorado Springs to Parker. Put your hands on top of your head for me real quick. In a Best Buy parking lot last November, Adam Turner was handcuffed and placed in the back of a Lone Tree police car, marking the end of his career as a prolific mail thief. And the transaction was not small. It was like $1,100 total. Using a credit card opened in Carlos Perlada's name, Turner was busted buying high-dollar electronics like a PlayStation and big-screen TV. I, I'm blown by how he could make those that, that purchase or those purchases. Perlada immediately tied it back to a piece of mail that he noticed had been missing from his box. I get some notifications from the post office on what is the mail that I will be receiving that day. He filed a complaint with the U.S. Post Office but never got a response. Everything looked look like normal, so I couldn't see anybody trying to force the, the locks or anything, so it looks like, you know, nothing happened. It wasn't until sitting down with us did he learn Turner used a key. Yeah, a lot of cards Police body cam video shows inside Turner's truck they found stacks of credit cards and several counterfeit arrow keys made from kitchen knives. Arrow keys are used by postal carriers to deliver mail to neighborhood cluster boxes, apartments, and in some cases, even open those blue postal boxes. This problem has become a recent problem, but it won't be a forever problem. U.S. Postal Inspector Melissa Atkin points to their Project Safe Delivery Initiative, which includes better tracking of those keys and an enormous and lengthy lift to move away from master keys altogether. Every single state in the country has uh, upgraded security boxes and upgraded locks. Now, not every single box and not every single lock has been upgraded, but we have rolled out thousands of these boxes and locks, even in Colorado. Keeping mail thieves behind bars is also a priority. Turner was arrested and convicted in El Paso County, but with no state mail theft charge, he pleaded guilty to identity theft and criminal possession of financial devices. His sentence, 24 months of probation. A sentence that undoubtedly will increase if found guilty on federal charges. The penalty really does depend on what charges we're able to prove. The lowest maximum penalty for theft of mail is five years. Acting U.S. Attorney Matt Kirsch says cases have increased, but more concerning is they're seeing organized crime rings are now involved. Sometimes that aren't necessarily based in Colorado, but that are sending crews to Colorado to carry out larger scale mail thefts. For his office and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service, building a case starts with community reporting, and he urges customers to report even one piece of lost mail. We certainly can't do it if we don't find out about the thefts in the first place. For victims like Perlotta, the hope is the Postal Service also works on their messaging, notifying customers when boxes are compromised. You don't know when this is going to happen again. Now, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service says the best way to report mail theft is going to be through their website or calling their office. We have all of the information on how you can do that online at cbsnewscolorado.com. For now, we're live in Denver. Karen Morfitt covering Colorado First. Great reporting as always, Karen. Thank you. Come